Paris, French soldiers are planning a rescue. In the mountains and hostile territory, a military unit has been ambushed. Contact is made by a British officer. SA, for your SA, the furthest friendly troops west. The helicopters involved in the rescue operation are Czech, Hungarian, Spanish, Belgian and French. So are the soldiers. The scenario, a crisis mission in Afghanistan. And although this military exercise is taking place in the French Alps, soon it could be for real. We are just preparing our helicopter units for the operational deployment in Afghanistan. And uh, we do not have such as the conditions like here in, in France and the high mountains. It's one thing. Another one is, of course, is the operational experience and the lessons learned we receive from our the French and uh, other countries' colleagues. And then it will die Yet this is not a NATO exercise. For the first time, these countries are training under the supervision of the European Defense Agency. It's the military arm of Europe's common foreign and security policy. But with 21 EU members belonging to NATO, are both necessary? It is overlapping, but, uh, but which, which we're the same forces that are operating together on, uh, on most, uh, most of the occasions. And uh, we have an EU military staff, we have a NATO military staff. They can be complementary to each other because the EU can take on one operation and NATO can, can concentrate on another. Um, and, and so, yes, they can, they can exist together uh, and go forward together, but I think they're complementary to each other. I do not see any problem, frankly, I can tell you. And do you know why? Because the soldiers are also the same, almost the same, of course. If you compare the nations like, for example, the France, uh, the UK, the Czech Republic or Poland or the Hungary, it's still the same soldiers. We are just the only one military. And sometimes we've got this, uh, uh, the European Union patch, sometimes the NATO patch. From my perspective as the soldier, as the military, there is not so much difference. It's this lack of difference which is under both Europe's and NATO's political spotlight, especially with the alliance's upcoming April summit at the Franco-German border cities of Strasbourg and Kell. Today's peaceful landscape is a far cry from 60 years ago when the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was created. In 1949, Europe was still emerging from the rubble of World War II. The Cold War had started and nothing symbolized this more than the Berlin blockade. On the 4th of April of the same year, 10 Western European countries, plus the United States and Canada, forged a military alliance. We will now proceed to the signing of the North Atlantic Treaty. The alliance, better known as NATO, was created to defend its members from any attack under Article 5. And for over 15 years, France, as a key founding member, hosted the alliance's headquarters in Paris. But this wouldn't last. French President General de Gaulle returned to power in the late 50s. France was now developing its own nuclear arsenal. His lack of trust in NATO and especially America's strong military presence was growing. So much so that in 1966 he announced France's withdrawal from NATO's integrated military structure. All non-French NATO forces were asked to leave and they did for Brussels. And for more than 40 years, France has prided itself on what it considered to be an independent foreign and defense policy. But France's withdrawal left a rift or mistrust with certain NATO members. For this former ambassador to NATO, de Gaulle's decision has to be put into context. General de Gaulle's decision was taken in an entirely different world. At the time, France was building up its strike force, which the Americans opposed. There was the war in Algeria, which some of our allies of the time were against. The war in Vietnam was beginning. And above all, there was the division of the world into two blocks, that of the Warsaw Pact and the Atlantic Alliance. All that has completely disappeared. But despite de Gaulle's decision, France always remained a NATO member, even if it was on the fringe of the alliance. 
And in March, the French parliament approved President Sarkozy's decision to return into NATO's military command structures. For Professor Maurice Weiss, this return is not that surprising. Since the start of the 90s, and in particular since 1995, France had been in NATO not in a clandestine way, but had returned to it in stages. Mais, uh... In other words, the reintegration was more or less done. It only needed a decision at political level. It was this decision that President Sarkozy believed he had to take. Deciding to re-enter NATO's integrated command structure in a way signifies that France is no longer a non-aligned state. Obviously, that is important at a symbolic level, as well as from the point of view of France's image in the world. President Sarkozy has argued that France's return to the heart of NATO will help Europe's common defense policy by diminishing fears that Paris has a hidden agenda when it comes to Europe's defense. Others are not so sure. Nicole Nassetto is the former director of the EU Institute for Security Studies. She's concerned about Europe's political will. Si tout va bien désormais dans l'OTAN. Why spend even more money in energy to do the same thing within the EU if everything goes well in NATO? If France is on the same wavelength as the US, if there's reconciliation with what the president calls the Western family. Pour faire la même chose au sein de l'Union. This reintegration doesn't mean that European defence policy will not move forward. I believe we could do new things, even more for European defence, but we'll do it within a NATO framework. We could make European defence a pillar of NATO rather than a tool for the Union to use to reaffirm the Union's role on the international scene. These soldiers, who took part in the European Defence Agency training, will soon be heading to Afghanistan. A conflict which is seen as a testing ground, not only for NATO, but a test of commitment for the EU. A commitment to defend outside of Europe's borders. One of the major problems the Atlantic Alliance is going to have to resolve is clearly the response to the Americans' request for reinforcements for the war in Afghanistan and the way the Obama administration intends to resolve the problem. We can't prejudge the Americans' requests, but we can imagine that the Europeans' responses will not live up to what the Americans ask for. On the 4th of April, NATO will officially welcome France back into its military command structure, 60 years to the day the North Atlantic Treaty was signed. An alliance which, like the Europe its members pledged to protect, continues to change.